In this video, I'm going to lay out all the unique locations in Starfield and where you need to go to reach them. I had spent a lot of my playtime doing the main and faction content of the game, so I had missed out on, on a lot of the side quest. And I hadn't really gone and explored the other systems, so I wanted to see just how many unique locations there are in the game. I have searched through every single star system, and I have found that there are currently 27 unique locations that are not procedurally generated. I believe that I have covered them all, but please note that I have not done all of the side quests yet, and there are multiple that do not appear until you progress far enough into the quest. After watching this video, if you know of any that are not in this one, please let me know in the comment section below. I will also make this video as spoiler free as possible, but will add a timeline to the description so you can reference it later. I will also not mention any unique locations that are just for sightseeing, so places like the London Landmark on Earth, the Mars Launchpad on Mars, and etc. I will also not include any locations that are used for either the main quest or faction quests, as they should be pretty easy to find for yourself. This video has taken a lot more work than my previous videos, so if you enjoyed the content, please let me know by commenting, liking, or subscribing. The first one is going to be New Homestead on Titan, located in the Soul System, and this is one of the first stations that was built outside of Earth as humanity first reached out into the stars. While this location is still operational, it is nothing more than a memento to how far we have come as a species. Inside you will find people growing plants themselves instead of using robotic help like the rest of the settled systems. The inhabitants of Titan believe in sticking with tradition and prefer a quiet, simple lifestyle. Down below you will find a museum that showcases Earth's past while also showing you the whole station and how it operates. You can even get a tour from inside the museum from one of the workers. This location also hosts one of the cutest quests in the game. If you head to the medic ward, the doctor will lament about how busy she is uh, caring for the tourists that get hurt and can't adequately spend time with the new homestead population. She has an idea to ruin Titan's reputation and in turn result in her being able to spend more time with her actual patients. She'll give you a monster costume and instruct you to head outside and scare some tourists. While incredibly simple, I found this quest hilarious, and if you do it a few times, you will actually get the monster costume to keep. The next one is Deimos Shipyard. It's located on Mars, also in the Soul System. It is a pretty small side location that is primarily used during the Ryujin mission board. However, I wanted to include it. It features a small museum like show floor that showcases the lineup of their starfighters. Upon heading downstairs, you'll meet up with a UC member station there. You can also purchase ships and add UC Vanguard related parts to your ship here. It seems like there may have been some cut content also here as there is a Deimos work system that has option to apply for various jobs that are not available at this time. And this is one of the only ones for Deimos that I have found in the game. So leads me to believe that there may have been something more here. The next one is going to be Mars Mech Factory located on Mars, also in the Soul System. South of Sidonia, you're going to find this factory, a derelict location that was once used extensively during the Colonial War. Now you'll find this location overrun with spacers. And not only is this a great place for early game XP because it's in the Soul System, it also gives you a glimpse of the world before the events of Starfield. Upon clearing out the spacers, a spaceship will swoop down with reinforcements. And I always love when the game does this because this view is just epic. The Almagas Star Station located on the Olympus system is one of the cooler side locations of the game. Upon entering, you're greeted to an abandoned casino star station and you immediately notice that things are not as they seem as the grav drives have been disabled and you're moving around in zero G. Upon entering into the main foyer, you are greeted with a group of spacers who are there to perform a heist on the substation. Once you foil their plan, you can find a huge safe that has a variety of loot inside, as well as a computer system that requires a certain access code in order to obtain the winnings. I loved seeing this in the trailer, and I feel like it fits very well with this game. The next location is going to be Research Outpost U309 located in the Altair system. 
This location hosts one of my favorite side quests in the game. You may get access to the quest by traveling to a random system. A ship is going to wave you down and let you know that there is increased spacer activity in the Altair system and to stay away if you know what's good for you. Upon landing there, you're ambushed by a spacer army and once you make it inside and towards the basement of the building, you find a lone Freestar Ranger and she lets you know that the UC is also here to help. However, both parties are pinned down and need assistance. This turns into a three-part quest that has such a good feel to it. I don't want to spoil it any further. Definitely give this one a try. In the starting star system in Alpha Centauri, you will find a derelict spaceship located near Grimson called the Deimos Armored Transport. Outside there is usually a Crimson Fleet member flying around that you can quickly deal with and once you head inside you notice that something is amiss right away. Every 30 seconds or so a large noise can be heard, the lights will flash and the gravity systems on the ship will fail. This results in you having to maneuver around via zero G for a time before the system resumes. This place is filled with Crimson Fleet so if you're aligned with them you could just simply walk past them and not have to worry about fighting them. This place is huge and has a very cool way to maneuver through the ship that requires use of the zero G. You can even find some vaults deeper within that can hold some great rewards. This is a very good place to visit early on for loot and XP. Gagarin Landing located on Gagarin in the Alpha Centauri system is one of the bigger towns in the game. I wanted to include it because none of the major factions directly point you to this location. And this is another one of the older human colonies that has a lot of personality. The inhabitants live hard lives, and you can even find some corpo suits wandering about. This place also has some cool side content, like the one involving Radiant Medical, which I won't spoil for you guys. It also looks like this location could have had some cut content. If you head to the end of a particular platform, you can find a job posting machine that has a variety of job descriptions. However, they're not available to apply for. It just seems weird that they would put this, but not have anything to do with it, especially since these machines aren't located anywhere else but at this location. Either way, I definitely like the charm of this mining colony, and I suggest you guys go check it out. Another unique location located in the Alpha Centauri system is going to be Star Station RE939 located near Voss. This is another location that is great for early game XP as it is in the starting system. On this star station you will find a lot of Varun Zealots and that they have taken over. Why they would be interested in this specific star station is beyond me. But one cool thing about this place is it is a research facility for various flora and fauna located in the system. You can even open the doors to the fauna enclosures and have them help you out with the Varun threat. And I thought this was a pretty cool little detail of this location. The next location is going to be, I believe it's pronounced Etheria Ruins and it's located in the wolf system. And honestly, there really isn't much to this place. You can find a lot of debris to what looks like to be an old battlefield. You can find some spacer scavenger cargo floating about. And after a distance, you will see the old den. This is obviously an old version of the den that is located within the same system that is obviously destroyed. Unfortunately, I don't have any information that would explain what happened to the old den. So if you guys have any information, please be sure to let me know in the comments below. The next location is a little bit of a perplexing one. This is going to be the Bindi Mining Post located on Bindi near Aquila. Upon entering this location, you're greeted with a number of Crimson Fleet robots, which honestly is a first sight for me. I didn't know that these existed and I can't believe I never saw any of these before. Unfortunately, this is pretty much the extent of the location. It's definitely unique and it looks interesting. However, there's no notes that I have found and there's no computers to read anything on as far as I'm aware. I've also not done any side quests that would take me to this location, but like I said earlier, I haven't done them all, so it's entirely possible that I missed one. So if you guys know anything more about this place, also be sure to let me know in the comments. Another small location located in the Cheyenne system near Aquila is the Trident Luxury Lanes Star Station. 
while you may come here during the Ryujin quest line, I also wanted to mention it because it has a repeatable side quest um, that you can get by speaking to the receptionist. It requires you to acquire a large amount of a random resource, and once gathered, you'll return back to this person, you'll get paid, and then you can be repeated later for money. If you wanted to roleplay as a miner, this location and quest are for you. Another small location that doesn't have a lot of backstory is going to be the Battlefield Wreckage located in Groombridge 2 in the Groombridge system. This is another one of those battlefields from the Colony War and there's very little to do here. There's nothing to loot. And I've also not found any further information on this area, but I did want to include it because it is a unique named location in the game. The next location is going to be Lopez Farm, located on Mejio 2 in the Mojeo system. This location can actually turn into two different unique locations, thanks to a side quest called Failure to Communicate. You will get this upon traveling to the system, and I highly suggest this quest due to it being one of the only list quests in the game. And I found that faction to be pretty interesting and wish that there was more content centered around them. This is a three-part quest and has a lot of ship battles, so if you're a fan of space content, then you will be happy here. Without giving you too many spoilers, once you get to the final part of this quest, it will unlock or spawn the derelict substation within the same system, which I also thought was a pretty cool location in the game. The Neurodyne Botanics Lab, located on Beta Marie 1, is probably one of the best locations in the game. It has no quest tied to it as far as I'm aware, but if you head to this location in the Beta Marie system, you come across a green planet with amazing looking trees. This planet also has an abundant flora and fauna rating, with 12 different alien creatures available. This is easily apparent when you exit your ship as you're most likely going to be mogged by a bunch of pack creatures and the location itself has high level enemies so for me I would highly suggest staying away until you're ready. The lab also has amazing aesthetic and backstory so I'm not going to spoil it anymore. It's a pretty small location but in my opinion definitely recommend it. Star Station UCN48 has always been a mystery to me. This is located in the Murphid system and it is actually completely empty. As far as I know, there is no quest involved in this place and my companion even mentions that this place has been picked clean, so definitely weird. I haven't found any notes and besides some meager like healing items, there is just nothing else to this location. If anyone else has any other information, please be sure to let me know. One of the coolest derelict ship events located in the game has got to be the Colander located in the Schrodinger system. This one screams horror vibes and it's perfect for Halloween. I'm definitely not going to spoil what happens here. Absolutely do this quest and enjoy. It's so good. This next one is another one that is probably one of my favorites. It is the Kazal Sulfur Mines located on Kazara in the Nira system. And this location is completely loaded with Varun Zealots, probably the most that I've seen in one location before. Not sure if those enemies are randomized, but that is not what makes this location so creepy. Um, the actual worst thing about this place is the inhabitants. I mean, what in God's mistake is this creature? This game really goes all out with the aliens. I was worried that we were just going to get boring variations of earth creatures, but in this game, each different variation impresses me when I come across it. This is a very high level location, so would advise caution, but man, this location is so cool and creepy. Another good one for horror fans is going to be the Reliant Medical Organics Lab located in Beta Turnian 1 in the system with the same name. This is the first location that had a hostile bat creature on it that I've come across and I'm absolutely here for it. This place has an amazing backstory full of pack hunting creatures and there is even a pretty cool event that happens. 
I'm, it's not big. I'm not going to spoil it, but I will say that once you get to the big room, make sure you walk the whole upper scaffolding before you jump down below. It's a pretty scary thing that I've seen happen that I haven't seen at any other location. So I thought it was a pretty cool little detail. I highly suggest you guys go and enjoy. The next location is going to be the Crucible located on, I'm probably going to say this wrong, the Chartibus system. Um, located on Chartibus 3, this place houses one of the coolest quests in the game, in my opinion. If you have seen my companion video, you probably already know of the companion that you can get from this quest line. But I'm going to leave this completely spoiler free. Go here, do the entire quest line. And there's going to be another unique area unlocked once you get to the final area of this quest. So this one essentially turns into two. The next location is the abandoned shipping depot located on Algarab 2. And this is one of those locations that I'm not fully sure if it's procedural or not. The name matches up with one that would be. And there are just random Crimson Fleet located here. Not sure if this is going to be different enemies for your playthrough. But this location was here at the same place for another character. Which in my opinion would be highly unlikely if it was procedural as they are placed randomly. Either way, this place has a lot of enemies and it's unique. And it's on a distant planet so it's great for endgame. Vulture's Roost, located on Jaffa 4 in the Jaffa system, is the ecliptic home base, and this location has a lot going for it. For one, there's going to be a ton of enemies, there is a ton of loot, and there is multiple contraband chests that are just completely full of contraband items, as well as other contraband items floating around on the tables and stuff. Um, there is even a free ship that you can steal once you get to the end of this location. The best part is, the enemies do respawn after a set time, and the contraband chests also replenish as well. If you're trying to roleplay as a smuggler, and you found the amount of contraband that you find in the world too low, you no longer have to search for it. If you're like me and you're using a mod that increases the amount that contraband gives you, Money is no longer going to be a concern. You could just keep running this every couple of days and you'll have all of the contraband items that you need. Unfortunately, the free ship that I mentioned is only a one time thing the first time that you come here. However, that's not really anything fancy. The ship was just a random one. I would much rather have a place where I can just repeatedly get contraband and this is it. Safehouse Gamma, located on Andromos 2 in the Andromos system, is another great horror location in the game. It's one that you can get to early on, but again, I would advise caution if you're not fully prepared. This place is short and sweet. It's well worth it. I'm not going to spoil it. Definitely go check it out if you haven't already. This next location is great if you're trying to get your 0G kills for your skill. The Trade Authority Space Station located in the Volo system is taken over by spacers and you're recruited by the inhabitants there to help deal with the problem. Now this star station is huge and it has both 0G and gravity portions of it and I think it blends so well together. For those of you that have watched the gameplay trailers, you might remember this place. There is also a pretty significant chest located at the end of this location that can have some pretty good loot for you. Another unique location that is, you know, pretty small is going to be the Autonomous Star Yard located in Volley Orbit. As the name suggests, this place is completely void of all human life and it's full of robotic enemies. The Star Yard also has a unique event that happens when you get to a certain part of it, which I thought was pretty interesting. I hope to see little features like this used in future content, whether it be in the forms of mods or DLC. The secret outpost located at Denebola 4 in the system with the same name houses a very unique quest called the Mantis. You can get this quest randomly by picking up a slate from a spacer enemy labeled secret outpost. I'm not going to spoil this quest anymore for those that have not done it yet. This one is going to be a very interesting one and you get some pretty good unique rewards for completing it. So 
definitely suggest giving it a try. The last location I have for you guys is Ilios Retreat, located on Ixil 2 in the Ixil system. Upon landing here, you quickly learn that its inhabitants are a group of convicts who have amended their ways and are trying to better their lives by paying off each other's bounties and banding together. The location itself is very puzzling. It's supposed to be a bunch of convicts, yet they have the money to pay off everybody's bounties. And if you look at the interior of the retreat, you can see that it's a little bit more lavish than you would be led to believe. And it, again, this is all very puzzling and everything is explained in the related quest of this area. The quest is broken into three parts. I found it to be incredibly thought provoking and offers multiple ways to approach the ending. So highly recommend this one. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I wanted to put a list together of all the unique locations that I found. I believe that I have covered them all, but with a game as big as this, it's entirely possible that I have missed some. So like I said, if there are any that I have not covered in this video, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to go visit and check it out. This video took not only a lot of time to research, but also record. So again, like I said, if you enjoyed and you're not subscribed yet, please be sure to do so. It really helps out the channel. Thank you guys for checking out this video and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.